and welcome to the Somerset News Network. This is a personal comment on the political situation over Brexit today. And we're now into August 2019. Three years ago, David Cameron said that we could have a referendum on whether we should remain in the EU or leave the EU. So you either voted to leave or voted to remain. The leave vote won. That's democracy, that's how it works. You vote, we had a two-way vote, and leave vote won. So democracy says that we have to leave the EU. There was nothing about deals and staying in and single market and the other the plan was that we would leave the single market the customs union take control of our borders that is what they told us but oh no cameron resigns mrs may comes in mrs may has a group of civil servants uh, headed by mr robinson who is uh, talking to the eu behind the back of the ministers. Ian Duncan Smith resigned because Robinson was negotiating with the EU behind his back and directly talking to Mrs May and not going through him. So that was the first guy that resigned. Now alarm bells should have started ringing then. But then we had the agreement, the May letters that she wrote, uh, the agreement that she signed. Mrs May took her cabinet down to Checkers for a weekend and they signed an agreement. She got the deal. Boris Johnson resigned. Steve Baker resigned. I think there were seven resignations in all over the agreement that they had at it, it, the Chequers House, the Prime Minister's weekend retreat. Now, seven ministers resigning from the government in years past would have brought a government down. But no, Mrs May stayed in place, new people were brought in. And even they didn't like what was going on. Even they resigned once they got the May deal was put before Parliament. The Mayor deal was rejected by Parliament. Why? It was the mother of all bad deals. It did not let us leave the EU. All it did was put us in limbo land. And then everything that was going to happen afterwards was going to be agreed. And they had another two years. So we would have been in the EU a member of the EU, a member of the single market, a member of the customs union, with no ta seat at the table, no powers to veto anything, and they then would have dictated how we would leave and how, or how they would then control us afterwards. The mother of all bad deals, the May deal, it had to be destroyed. Parliament destroyed it. The Labour Party were against it. Many of the things in the May deal were what the Labour Party wanted. The Labour Party rejected it because they thought they could bring the government down, create a general election and get into power. The SNP is the same. They, 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 they so-called want independence. Scotland wants independence. Well, I can understand Scotland wanting independence. I, I don't think it's a good idea. I'd like them to stay in the Union. We're better and stronger on our own as a group. England, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. You know, personally, I would like Ireland to come back into the UK, but I don't think that's going to happen. But we're better together. Scotland wants to be independent, but... Then, on the other hand, they want to be a member of the EU. How can you want independence 
and then be a member of the EU and have the EU control what you do. Because even though Scotland would have a budget, it would be controlled by Europe. So I think in five or six years' time, if Scotland got independence that, and they were in the EU, they would want to leave like we are. Many Scots want to leave the EU like we do. Anyway, that, that, that's another story. Let's get back to Brexit. So, we've got a European election this year. And the Brexit Party won. Five weeks before the election they started. They had a list of candidates. And they won the popular vote. Now, although they're, they're not in the British government, they're the majority party of English MEPs in Europe. So, I believe that Boris Johnson, now he's taken over as Prime Minister from May, being a Brexiteer, has two mandates. One, the referendum to leave the EU, with or without a deal. And the May deal was scrapped and is the mother of all bad deals. And all you've got to do is read it and you can see. It's complicated to start with. But if you go on to Brexit Central, they will explain it all to you. And explain it in layman's terms so you can understand. The May deal, it's all about treaties and, and articles and protocols and numbers and names that we, me mortals, don't even know what they are. So, go on to Brexit Central, read the documents there, keep up with what Brexit Central is up to. It's a brilliant website for information. So, I'm a Brexiteer. I voted to leave the EU. And democracy should rule. We're, 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 democrat, we're supposed to be a democratic country. But we have a parliament that is split. The parties, Conservative Party, Labour Party, are split on Brexit. The Labour Party have a number of Labour MPs who don't want to be in the EU. They want to leave as well. Dennis Skinner, but he's not saying a lot lately. Kate Howey, who was very vocal and was a part of the Leave campaign. And there are a few more, but they're keeping their heads down. The Conservative Party is totally split. Now, the problem is, you think, well, if the Conservative Party are Tories, and they believe in democracy and one man, one vote, and they believe that we should be an independent nation. Why would a Tory MP be so enthusiastic about being controlled by the European Union? I, I've been rattling my brain over this for, for, for a number of years. People like Kenneth Clark, but Kenneth Clark was in the Bilderberg Group. The Bilderberg Group was a secret organisation that was pro-European Union, wanted a European uh, state. So Kenneth Clark was being controlled by other people, other groups, other powers, don't know who. Was it big business? Or was it political organisation? I don't know, F something like Freemasonry or secret organisations. Like the, they say it's the Illuminati, but that's the Scottish Freemasons, so... I, I, I don't know. I'm only surmising. Now we find that we've got Dominic Grove, uh, we've got Hammond, and another uh, leading Tory MPs who say they're going to bring down the Boris government to stop a no-deal Brexit. Now, if you are a controlling group outside of Parliament, who are pro-EU, I don't know if they're communists or right-wing or Nazis or, or, I don't know what they are, but there is a group of people 
who are pro-EU, who want us to stay in the EU, who control these MPs. Now, if you wanted to control MPs, say you were communist, for instance, why would you want to infiltrate the Labour Party under Corbyn? The Labour Party under Corbyn is going to be left-wing and sink the red flag anyway. You might have one or two in there to make sure they toe the line, but that wouldn't be your main focus. If you really, really want to influence British politics, you would infiltrate the Conservative Party. Now, we've seen that we went in the EU with Ted Heath. And we've seen on the YouTube there's lots of rumours and conspiracies about Ted Heath being a German uh, agent and all the rest of it. Don't know if it's true, but it's the sort of thing that would happen. They would be controlled by people or politicians who are linked with the EU and want us in and want us to remain in. Now, if you want the Conservative government to remain in the EU, you put in Conservative candidates who are pro-EU. Hammond, Grove, etc. They may not be true, what we call, true Conservatives. I consider myself a, a, a Conservative, with a small c. As a voter, I'm, I'm independent. I'm a floating voter. Uh, but over the years, I've become more and more conservative. But I'm not a Tory conservative like, like May or Cameron. I, 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 I came up with the, the solution that the Tory party was too left-wing for me. And the, the, over the years, that's been brought out. It, it, it's far too far to the left. I, I'm not a great believer in right and left. I'm only using it so I can explain what I'm saying so you understand what I mean. Uh, I believe that if you've got a problem, you've got to find a solution. Um, the first thing you've got to do is have a set of rules to work by. Those rules that we use are called our constitution. We have the common law rights which some aren't written down and some are. We have Acts of Parliament that maintain our rights. They tell us we haven't got a constitution. Why do they tell us we haven't got a constitution? Because they want us to stay in the EU. And if we haven't got a constitution, then they can make us stay in the EU. Our constitution does not allow a foreign power to rule over us. Fact. But the problem is it isn't written as a part of... A, it's in an Act of Parliament, it's, but what it is, it's in the oath that MPs take, not in the Articles of the Bill of Rights. The Bill of Rights that they say we haven't got of 1689. Now what happened was we had James the Second. Now James the Second was Catholic and he threw the Protestants out of Parliament. Protestants couldn't be armed. He took the guns away from Protestants. This is after the Civil War, after the Roundheads and Cavaliers. We're now going into 1860. He took the magistrates, the lawyers, the judges, and members of parliament were all Catholic. Protestants weren't allowed to take any posts up. So we had the Monmouth Rebellion. As a Somerset lad, I know all about the Monmouth Rebellion. Um, I think it was um, uh, 18, uh, 1685, maybe. Uh, I... I might have the date wrong, but I think it was round about then. Because in 1985, as a gunsmith, I went down to the 300-year 
uh, reenactment of the Battle of Sedgemoor. Monmouth, who was Protestant, brought mercenaries over from Holland. That's where we get the orange from, the Prince of Orange and all the rest of them. He brought some over from Holland, who were Protestants, to fight the Catholic. Unfortunately, Monmouth lost. And the king's men, the Catholics, chased the Protestants all over Somerset. The church down the road has a musket hole in it. And it's said, one of the guys from the rebellion is supposed to have taken sanctuary in the church and the king's men are supposed to have shot the church to get him out. I don't know how true it is, but that's one of the stories they tell in the village. But in 1688, Mary and William, Mary had the right to the crown. William was the Prince of Orange. They came over down towards Newquay, came and landed, went up to Exeter, picked up people on the way. I suppose they would have gone down what is now the uh, A303 and headed to London. They got to London. James II heard of this and disappeared up to Scotland because they were Jacobites. They took the crown, Mary and William were given the crown by the people, and we had the Declaration of Rights, which was the Bill of Rights. It was written into an act by Parliament called the Bill of Rights. We then had the Act of Settlement, and the Crown and Parliament Recognition Act, all the same year. Now, the Act of Settlement in 1700, the last part, it's mainly to do with the accession of the crown being in the Protestant line. That's why our Queen and Charlie would take over and then William. And it was all about the succession in, in the Protestant line. The last part of that that everybody forgets is it says... The laws of England are the birthright of the people. That's the common law. Yes, the common law. And that goes back to Alfred the Great. Alfred the Great toured the country and wrote down our common laws. Our common law is written in Blackstones. Blackstones can be found on an American website called the Avalon Project. All the information is there. All you need to do is read it. Anyway, back to the oath. The oath that MPs take that is within the Bill of Rights, which they don't take anymore. Why not? Because it says that they swear that no foreign power should rule over us as part of the oath. So, if they're in the EU, they can't be in the EU because no foreign power can rule over us. The EU rules over us. So, to stop them saying this, they sort of stop saying that. And what they did is they brought in the Oaths Act. So, the Oath Act stopped them saying the, act, the, the, the oath that's in the Bill of Rights. Question. If the, to be an MP you have to use the oath that's in the Bill of Rights, are they constitutionally still allowed to sit as an MP if they don't take that oath that's in the Bill of Rights? How can the Parliament make an Oaths Act contrary to the Bill of Rights, which is our Constitution? I ask the question. I don't know the answer. Anyway, then we come to the EU. We should never have been in the EU in the first place because no foreign power should rule over us. Ted Heath had no right to sign any treaty with the EU. Lisbon Treaty, Maastricht Treaty, all of them. All of them were illegal according to the Bill of Rights. That's why they tell us we haven't got a Bill of Rights. That's why they tell us we haven't got a written constitution. We have a written constitution. Blackstones is common law, part of our Constitution. The Bill of Rights, the Magna Carta. Now, there's a number of um, 
Acts of Parliament between the Magna Carta and the Bill of Rights that are still in force. 1345, we have liberties of the subject. In there is the great phrase, by due process of law. And I haven't met a solicitor that understands where that comes from yet. Now, as a Brexiteer, what do you think Boris is going to do now? I think Boris is going to play hardball with the EU, which is what we need. I think he knows we've got to leave. Now, why is all of a sudden the Conservative Party playing hardball with a no-deal Brexit? Now, I believe that after the European elections, when Brexit won the vote, and the Conservative Party basically lost a hell of a lot of votes, they are worried about you losing the general election if they don't deliver Brexit. I think the Tories know they've got to deliver Brexit so they can stay in power. That's what this is all about. It's not whether we should stay in or out. It's, it's saving the Tory party. But if Brexit is going to happen and Boris is going to do it, I'm with Boris. Although I'm a Brexit party supporter, I've got to sort of support Boris with this. Now, I think what's going to happen is that they're going to do two things to bring this about. We know that Parliament have not got a majority to vote for a no deal. It won't happen. Too many MPs are controlled by foreign powers or foreign businesses or by secret organisations to let that happen. So what's going to happen? I think that Boris will call the EU's bluff like it's doing at the moment because they won't negotiate. Say we're going to have a no deal. He'll get to September, beginning of October, and he may put a bill before Parliament. There will be, he may lose it. <clears throat> the Labour Party will put in a vote of no confidence, thinking that the Conservative MPs that are pro-Europe will bring him down. Boris will then not allow the Conservative Party to have another leader. He will call a general election. That will stop Parliament. And then they w will still be ministers, the Prime Minister, the Brexit Minister, the Head of the Civil Service. They will all still be in place. All the ministers will be in place. MPs will then not be allowed to sit as, as MPs once he's called the general election. And then they'll allow the, the no deal to go through, call the general election, and then we sort out which party we want to go forward. The other thing that Boris could do is use the Robin Tilbrook case. Now, Robin Tilbrook is a solicitor, and he's linked with English Democrats. Now, because it's a different party, the Tories don't want to recognise it. Labour don't want to recognise it. But Robin Tilbrook is a solicitor. He's come up with a case that says we left on the 29th of March. He's using the Milliner uh, case where she said that the government couldn't negotiate with the EU without Parliament's OK. He's using that to say May didn't have the right to okay an extension to Article 50 without it being okayed by Parliament. It was never okayed by Parliament. So, Parliament had the Act for us to, with the Withdrawal Act for us to leave the EU, which said it was the 29th of March. So, technically, by law, we have already left the EU on the 29th of March. Now, if Boris is clever, he can also use that as well. That will finish the Brexit party. Because we've got Brexit. What are they going to do? But I like Nigel Farage and I like the people that he's got around him. They talk like I feel. They talk how I think. 
And I think what Boris is trying to do is get the Conservative Party to take that stance to make the Brexit Party impotent if there's a general election. Now, obviously, we've all got to see what's going to happen, but that's my thoughts on Brexit and what's going to happen. And oh, well, let's talk again. Any comments down below if you think I'm wrong? Well, uh, any comments if you think I'm right too? Um, anyway, this is Ian, Somerset News Network, signing off. Bye.